So this example will deal with the Atwood machine. So let's suppose we have an elevator with a mass of 1,000 kilograms that is suspended over a frictionless pulley by a massless and flexible cord. So a mass of 800 kilograms is attached to the other end of our massless and flexible cord. We want to calculate in part A the acceleration of the elevator and in part B we want to find the tension in our core. Now, by neglecting the mass of our core and by neglecting the friction in the pulley, we're allowing ourselves to make the assumption that the force will remain undiminished in our cord. In other words, at any given point along the cord, our force will be exactly the same. So let's begin part A by drawing our diagram for our moving objects or our system of objects. So here we have two objects. We have object number one, mass one, our elevator, and object our, uh, number two, our mass two, that has a mass of 800 kilograms. So because we have two different objects, that means we need to draw two different force diagrams and we're going to have two different equations. So let's look at our elevator. When the elevator is moving downward, this object is moving upward. So for the elevator, we choose the downward direction to be positive. And for object number two, we're choosing the upward direction to be positive. So our positive direction is the direction of motion for each of these two objects. So let's look at our force diagram, our free body diagram for each of our objects. So for the elevator, we have the force of gravity that's pulling on our object that's pointing downward. At the same time, we have the force, the tension in our cord that's resisting this motion. So this is positive and this is negative. What about object number two? So now we have, this is positive, our force in the rope, our tension in our cord, that's pointing upward in the same direction as our motion. At the same time, the force that's pulling on mass two is pulling it downward, is resisting the movement upward. So, we have two different force diagrams, so that means we need two different equations. So let's sum up all the forces acting along the y-axis for object number one, our elevator. So this, the sum of all the forces, is equal to the force of gravity acting on our elevator, which is positive, minus the force of tension, which is negative because it's pointing in the opposite direction, equals mass of that elevator, our object number one, multiplied by whatever its acceleration is. Let's call it A. Now, notice our acceleration of the object, M2, and our elevator, M1, is exactly the same. These two objects are connected, and so these accelerations will be the same. So if we look at our sum of all the forces acting on our object number two, mass two along the y direction, we see that our sum is equal to, well, the force of tension is positive minus the force of gravity, which is negative, equals mass of this object now, our mass number two, multiplied by the same A. Now, because we made the assumption that our cord is massless and our pulley is frictionless, the force in the rope on this end is the same exact as the force in the rope on the other end. So the tension in the cord is exactly the same. So notice that in the first equation we have two unknowns, our A and the tension. Likewise, in the second equation we also have two unknowns, A and our F of T. Now, let's take our equation number two and rearrange and solve for the tension in our rope, in the cord, and we get the tension is equal to M2 multiplied by A plus our force acting on object number two. So let's take this value and plug it in for the force, uh, for the tension in our cord in example one. So we take this, plug it into here, and we get the following equation. Next, we distribute our negative sign, we get the following, and then we bring these two guys on one side and these two guys on the other side. We get the following equation. So we take out 
our two uh, constants. So we have the A and A, we take that out, and the G and G, we take that out. We get the following equation, and now we bring over M1 plus M2 to this side, and we see that our acceleration is equal to G times M1 minus M2 divided by M1 plus M2. So we plug in our values, 9.8, our gravitational constant multiplied by 1,000 grams minus 800 grams divided by 1,000 grams plus 800 grams or 1,000 kilograms plus 800 kilograms. So we plug that into our calculator and we get our acceleration of the elevator as well as this object is 1.1 meters per second squared. So our elevator is moving downward with this acceleration while our mass number two is moving upward with this acceleration. Now we can use this value and one of these equations to solve for the tension in our core. So let's use what we found here. So the force or the tension in our core is equal to M2 times A plus F of G. So we plug in our values and we get that our tension in the cord is 6,960 newtons, so approximately 7,000 newtons of tension in our cord.